ketchup made with banana? What? Who would make such a thing? And what does it have to do with World War II? Mabuhay or in kapampangan, luwid kayo. Two years ago, I made this video about the mind-blowing history of ketchup and its roots in Southeast Asia. So if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to watch it after this video. Now back to today's question. In that old video, I mentioned the Filipino banana ketchup. And many non-Filipinos and Filipinos alike are still confused by it. Why make ketchup out of bananas? Now, to understand the true significance of banana ketchup, we must look back at its own roots. We must go back to where it came from. The beloved Filipino banana ketchup dates back to World War II. It was invented by the amazing Filipino scientist Maria Ilaga Norosa. Maria was born in Taal, Batangas on November 29, 1892, and she had an impressive career, earning her degrees from the University of Washington, Seattle in 1919, and even serving as the assistant state chemist for the entire state of Washington at a young age. She was an accomplished pharmaceutical and food chemist, and she had a promising career in the United States, impressing even the best food chemists of the time. But instead of choosing her own career, instead of choosing her own personal gain, instead of choosing to make money in the United States, States, Maria was a true patriot at heart. She truly loved and cared for her people. Maria returned to the Philippines in 1922 with a steadfast conviction to address the issue, the ever worsening concern of malnutrition in the country. She worked hard to invent many types of food to minimize the need for imported products to feed the Filipinos. She took advantage of the abundant natural resources of the islands, of the native fruits, the native crops, the native vegetables to make the Philippines truly self-sufficient. In fact, the banana ketchup wasn't even her most important invention. During World War II, Maria joined the guerrilla forces fighting for our freedom. And in the thick of it all, she invented what they call magic food, such as soyalak, a nutritious soybeans drink, and darak, a rice cookie rich in vitamin B1. These are food inventions that saved countless of lives during the war. She also created a process of canning food for the guerrilla warriors fighting for our people's liberation. She even found ways to smuggle food to feed the starving prisoners of war inside the Japanese concentration camps. Without her magical food inventions, thousands more would have died. From concentration camps to hospitals and in the streets, her magic food saved many lives. Not just the Filipinos, but the Americans, the British, and other foreigners as well. Her resourcefulness, diligence, and boundless imagination makes her a true hero. And when Manila was falling, Maria refused to safely evacuate with her family. She wanted to stay behind, and she was quoted saying, I cannot abandon my work. And on February 13, 1945, Maria Ilaga Norosa was hit twice by a shrapnel. She died in the line of duty. She dedicated her life's work in her mission to empower the Filipino people, to make the country self-sufficient, to make the Philippines truly independent in meeting the needs of its people. Unfortunately, her dreams of a self-sustaining Philippines is still far from reality. Sadly, the Philippines, despite being an agricultural country rich in abundant natural resources, still relies on the importation of products, of food such as rice, to feed its people, to feed our people. Which makes me wonder, what would Maria Orosa do if she sees the Philippines today? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that is it for me today. If you like this video and learn a thing or two, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, show your support and please be my patron or get a copy of my book. Dakalpung salamat! See you next time or in Tagalog Kita Kits and in Kapampangan, Mikitix!